Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm gonna show you a soldering tutorial tailored towards uh, through-hole parts. I have also done a soldering tutorial on SMD parts, so if you'd like to watch that one, there will be a link in the description below. Let's start with the tools and parts we need for the job. I'm going to be using this adjustable soldering station and you definitely want a temperature adjustable soldering station for this job. If you're looking to get a cheap one, I can recommend the TS100, which is a compact soldering iron. It's portable, it's great value for money. I will post a link in the description to places where you can get one. You might also include a few different tips for the iron because different soldering jobs require different tips. Next, you will need something to clean the soldering iron and you can use a wet sponge or a uh, brass sponge. I prefer the uh, brass sponge because um, uh, I just feel it cleans the tip better and it doesn't suck the heat away from the tip with a thermal shock like the wet sponge does. I will link these in the description as well. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, a professional manufacturer of printed circuit boards. Their website is modern and has convenient features like easy to use order form with built-in Gerber viewer, production process tracking, package tracking and single button reorder for previous orders without having to upload Gerber files again. Next you will need some solder wire. I recommend you get some um, uh, leaded solder wire like 6337 being a popular alloy of uh, solder wire due to its properties. If you can get good brand names like uh, Kester, it's even better. It will be higher quality which uh, should provide better results. If you can't find any known brands, then it's okay to get the Chinese stuff as well. Just don't expect the same level of quality. You definitely want to stay away from the lead-free solder because it's harder to work with due to its higher melting temperature. Another thing you want to have when soldering is flux. Flux is a chemical with the role of dissolving oxides present on the surfaces we want to solder and also to prevent new oxides from forming while heat is applied. You can get flux as a solid, gel uh, like this one I have here or liquid. I generally prefer the gel type flux because of its uh, properties, it sticks, it doesn't flow everywhere and you can easily dispense it with a syringe. By far the best gel flux I have tried so far is the Amtec 559 but be aware everything you see on eBay and Aliexpress is fake so if you can get it from a reputable distributor that's what I recommend. The fake stuff from Aliexpress works as well but it produces more nasty fumes and smells bad unlike the genuine stuff which gives a mild natural pine smell. You don't always need flux because the uh, soldering wire should have an inner core containing some rosin flux which uh, will melt and flow on the solder joint but sometimes that's not enough and uh, you will need to add extra flux. Another thing to uh, have while soldering is some isopropyl alcohol or some PCB cleaner. You can find various types of PCB cleaners in can forms I have tried several and they work great for cleaning PCBs after soldering. Optional, you can also have a fume extractor fan. Here is one I built myself a few years ago using a powerful fan and some carbon activated filter. Fumes tend to be a problem if you are soldering for longer times and you don't have a well ventilated area. If you only solder occasionally and you have an open window, then I would say a fume extractor is not really needed. But if you solder more often, you work on large PCBs, then you'll probably want to have a fume extractor because uh, inhaling the fumes is certainly not good for your health. Regarding the soldering temperature, I can say that I usually solder at uh, 280 degrees Celsius up to 300 degrees Celsius. If you have a soldering iron which doesn't have good thermal capacity, then you will need to increase the temperature to compensate for that. The soldering temperature also depends on the size of the pads and leads you are soldering. For large pads connected to the inner copper pads, also you will need to increase the temperature because the soldering iron cannot transfer enough power instantly, so we will compensate by increasing the temperature. 
but a good rule is to start at 280 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 536 Fahrenheit and work your way up if needed. But consider there are devices which are sensitive to temperature and if you increase your soldering iron temperature too much and you heat those devices for too long, they might get damaged or go out of spec. Usually I don't need more than a couple of seconds to solder a pin. PCB pads and tracks can also be destroyed if heated too high, so try to avoid that. The first step is to make sure we have clean surfaces. If the PCB is not clean, take some isopropyl alcohol and give it a wipe. We also want to make sure our soldering iron tip is clean. Use the brass sponge or the wet sponge until the tip is clean and shows no signs of oxides. Next, we position ourselves for the job and one of the mistakes I see often is adding solder to the tip before the actual soldering of the pin. That will evaporate the flux creating nasty oxide residue on the tip so the solder will not flow nicely onto the joint. The correct way to do it is to heat up the joint, bring it up to temperature and then feed the solder wire. For small solder joints with the right temperature and a good solder wire with decent flux core, you won't need any additional flux. It's important to have a tip shape that will help you get a greater contact surface with the pad and pin to transfer heat as efficiently as possible. Don't use just a thin pointy tip, that one will have a very small contact surface and poor thermal mass. Now feed just enough solder to get a perfectly looking solder joint. If there is too little solder, the joint will tend to look like this. Notice how we don't have a nice conical shape, but a shallow bump. If there is too much solder, the joint will look like this. It tends to turn into a ball of solder, extending over the edges of the pad. When the solder quantity is just right, it should look something like this. It should have this conical shape and the solder should adhere to both the component lead and the PCB pad. If you have too much solder on a joint, adding some flux will help you wick away the solder with just the soldering iron tip. Next, you can trim the component leads with a pair of side cutters. I would recommend using eye protection for this because uh, component leads tend to fly off when trimmed with a pair of sharp side cutters. I don't usually wear eye protection, but I just place my hand over the board while uh, cutting the leads to uh, catch those uh, flying leads. The last step is to clean the PCB for the flux residue left on the board. But this step is optional depending if the solder or flux used is a no clean variety or not. If the flux is a no clean then it can be safely left on the PCB and you only need to clean it if you wish to have it uh, perfectly clean. However, I like cleaning my boards for a better finish. And there is uh, two ways to do this. Uh, one of them is to use some isopropyl alcohol and an ESD uh, brush to scrape away the um, flux residue and then wipe it clean with some uh, paper towels or to use uh, one of these special PCB cleaners which has a chemical mix uh, designed specifically for cleaning PCBs. I like to use the uh, spray can because it's uh, easier, it already has the brush attached and um, I can do a, a very um, nice job with that. So this is how the uh, board looks after being clean. As you can see there is no uh, flux residue and it looks uh, so much better. So if you uh, like your boards clean like this, I recommend you use um, some cleaning products when you're finished soldering. I would also like to give you a few hints on the assembly of through-hole boards and I'm referring to the actual placement and orientation of parts on the board. So tip number one is to start with the smallest components first. 
they will be closest to the board and it's easier to get them placed first. Later on, when we have bigger components, uh, it will be difficult to maneuver around them with the small ones. Tip number two is to try to place similar parts in the same orientation to make it easier to read their values. For example, for color-coded resistors, try to, try to place them in a way that you can read all of the resistors from the same side of the board. For silk screen resistors or capacitors, try to place them in a way that you can read them all from the same orientation. And when you have uh, big components close to small components like I, have, I, like I have here, try to place that ceramic capacitor with the value uh, such as the value can be seen from the outside of the board. This will make it so much easier to debug problems with this, pro with this board. Tip number three, preform component leads by bending them with a special tool. I have one of these plastic tools that I use to bend the leads of through hole parts. The board will look very nice and tidy when all of the components have been preformed like this. Tip number four, bend the leads on the back of the PCB before soldering to keep the part in place while soldering. A third hand helping tool might be useful here if you want to clamp the PCB while soldering. I tend to do most of the soldering straight on the bench, no helping tool. You can also use some paper tape to help with securing the components while soldering. Tip number five, use sockets for integrated circuits if possible. It will be much easier to debug and repair a board with sockets. Just imagine having to desolder an integrated circuit pin by pin, but if you have a socket, it's a simple matter, just replacing the chip. Tip number six, if you want to increase the heat dissipation capability, you can solder through hole components higher off the board, thus you gain the advantage of the extra length of uh, the leads that will act as a heatsink for the component and you also get some extra airflow under your part. Tip number seven, if you plan to solder some wires to a PCB, it helps to pre-thin the wires before soldering. Next, when soldering them to the PCB, the solder coating on the wires will melt and combine much easier with fresh solder from the pad. With a bit of practice and following these uh, tips and tricks, you should be getting excellent results in no time. Soldering really isn't something complicated. I'm pretty sure everyone is capable of doing it, like I said, with a bit of info and practice. So that was all. I hope this video was useful and if so, please leave a comment or hit the like or dislike button to send me some feedback. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.